now you've raised this additional question regarding is there a way that we and a primary care clinician who has 14 chronic diseases to manage in a seven minute period of time because he's got 35 patients that I gotta see that can help us in terms of predicting when there's going to be benefit of a particular therapy. And there's a, a large and controversial, Peter, revolving literature regarding the role that eosinophils, circulating eosinophils have. We, there have been five papers in the last week and a half published on this with contradictory results. And so I don't think, I, I don't know the, the exact answer to this, whether eosinophils identify a person that has more of Frank's allergic asthmatic component, whether that's the biological process or whether it's a, uh, the, the patient's host response to deal with viral infections with eosinophils are supposed to be aiding us. Uh, exactly why that's occurring, it's unclear to me, but there is a hint amongst multiple studies that eosinophils are likely going to be predictive in whom and at what threshold. I still think remains unclear. What do you guys think? So, so Fernando um, gave, for the first time in this discussion, uh, mentioned an important term, and that's personalized, and the other word for that is precision medicine and targeting. And you know, Jim talks about the wisdom study, which was a non-inferiority study, and when you withdrew steroids, it didn't meet the, the non-inferiority criteria, therefore we say steroids didn't benefit. But the reality is about 5% more exacerbations, not statistically significant or not inferior, occurred. So the question is, in that 5% or whatever, those people suffered, okay? So that the point is finding getting markers, biomarkers, to identify the subgroups of patients, whether they're clinical biomarkers or, or bloody eosinophils. Because if, if we use the old-fashioned style where we have 1,000 patients in a trial and the average goes up here, but if you look at the individuals, some of them are dropping, a bunch of them are going up, a bunch of them are staying the same, and you start looking more precisely at that group, you're gonna dissect patients who benefited and didn't benefit. And can we predict those up front is the key question. And eosinophils is currently the bullseye. And is it gonna work or not? And we need to dissect it a little further. So let me just, I, and I want Frank to comment on this. So the COPD Foundation, working with the FDA, set up a biomarkers consortium. The concept being biomarkers, as, as most people know, serve as endpoints for clinical trials. Uh, so they're really important because if you do a drug study and you aim for a biomarker that the FDA doesn't recognize, the study may be fine, but you may not get your drug approved. So the foundation has run this. Frank is now the medical director, and eosinophils is one of the ones we, we hope to look at. Yeah, no, we, we've already submitted a letter uh, to the FDA that eosinophils are going to be coming there. You right know, the, uh, one of the things with the eosinophils uh, in the studies, uh, we lose our power when we start looking at five, 600 cells. There's just never enough numbers in the study. However, if you do have enough, the risk of an exacerbation when you start getting up to four and 500 cells becomes 50%. So you can do quantitative analysis like Dr. Suisa did around that concept and actually come up with a quantitative estimate of what the risks are of these various drugs, which uh, that's uh, uh, coming out in chest. It's online now, but I think we all should look forward to that. All right, so let, let, me, let me see if I can synthesize very, very briefly, put a bullet point, and it may not be fair, but I, I seem to hear, okay, we can go without the inhaled corticosteroids, but in a subset where the eosinophils may be higher than we would like, then steroids might make sense. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, I think that you should, you come back to the question that you asked, Jim. Uh, so many people are on triples already, you know? Uh, I can't tell you that's wrong. I mean, for some people it's probably right. I will tell you that I, will, I do what Frank does, that if they've had a history of pneumonias, if they've got osteoporosis, if they've got other concerns, I'd be more likely to try to, to downgrade them off of the inhaled steroid to a lama lava. Uh, on the other hand, if someone comes into me, they're doing fine, they don't have those issues, I don't know, I'm probably going to leave them alone. But perhaps more importantly, as a starter point, if they're very mild, maybe you could use a llama alone. But beyond that, I'm with Frank. I start a llama lava unless maybe this eosinophil thing will, or the asthma concept would change it. And as an example of the complexity, Byron, if they have a little osteoporosis and 7% eosinophils, are you less likely to taper them? Probably less likely and more likely yeah. to treat their osteoporosis. So there's not absolutes here. And, but, the, you know, we take all the, we're beginning to take these into account. If they had 0%, but they've had 
a bunch of flare-ups and they've previously been tapered, are you going to taper that steroid? No, uh, because it's not an absolute. What are the eosinophils doing? Are they reacting to some ideologic agent? Or are they actually the primary cause of the symptoms of the disease? We yeah. can say that in uh, an exacerbation, usually it's uh, primarily neutrophils and macrophages. Right. And then the eosinophils come in later. That's why we use oral corticosteroids or systemic corticosteroids in the treatment of an acute exacerbation. But clearly some patients have asthma COPD overlap and they express this Th2 inflammation. We can measure it by uh, looking at eosinophils and things like that. So I, I think it's a little bit of everything. And uh, it's just the, the cascade, the inflammatory cascade has a lot of different components. Well, the, the, one thing, the one thing I think we can all agree on is that systemic steroids yeah. have only one role in this disease. Five to seven, maybe 10, but five to 10 days during an acute right. exacerbation. Okay. So all these people who come into us I'm on five, 10, 20 milligrams of prednisone for years, that has no role in this disease. Now what about if exacerbations are continuing despite an inhaled regimen, what else can you add? Uh, to, to, to decrease the, the exacerbation well, two, two drugs that, are being, uh, that have been used widely and have some uh, evidence behind them and are part of a PCORI study uh, would be Dalarast, uh, phosphodiesterase 4 inhibitor, and uh, azithromycin, the common antibiotic it's used the macrolides. daily, macrolides. Yeah. And uh, they're actually being compared in a study, but most physicians use either the side effect profile of, uh, of uh, the, the PD uh, phosphodiesterase 4 inhibitor is a little bit uh, more pronounced with GI side effects, but they're both approved drugs. Not approved for that indication with the macrolide, but widely used. So that's drug four usually, uh, certainly before we go to five, which would be something like oral steroids. And, and in development now with the asthmatic phenotype, a lot of people are looking at biologics that have been used in asthma in the field of COPD, but I, I, I don't find that as terribly attractive to me. Then there are a couple of nebulized uh, versions of phosphodiesterase inhibitors that may be coming fairly soon that don't have the GI side effects. It might be worthwhile. So, so I have a comment that relates to this question, the future of this question, and the last question. So there was a biological experiment just put on, presented at the European Respiratory Meetings and put online in the New England Journal two years ago, and that tested a drug, mepolizumab, which is an IL-5 modulator, modulator that specifically decreases eosinophil count. And this drug only worked in patients with elevated eosinophil count. It abrogated eosinophil levels within four weeks to almost zero. And the higher the eosinophil count up front, um, the more likely we are to reduce exacerbations with this drug. So that answers a biological question a better answer to your question are, are is, it the, is the eosinophil the bear or the bear track? And that suggests that at least in part the eosinophil is the bear. And the second thing is that could be Jim's fifth drug after it goes to the FDA and Jim does his usual uh, presentation there to convince them it's a worthwhile drug.